What's going on, everyone? It's Steven Schock here with D1 Baseball. We are at the beautiful UNCW campus, University of North Carolina, Wilmington, where it's usually typically pretty sunny. We're by the beach, but it's a little gray out, meaning fall is rolling in. And nothing shows a sign of fall ball more than a 16-inning scrimmage that we got going on right now between UNCW and Brunswick Community College. So let's take a look and see what's going on. One of the best things about going to these fall ball games is a lot of the times they're free. And if they're free, that means there's no real tickets to check, which means you can pretty much sit wherever you want. So this is where I chose to sit, you know, two rows back, field level, pretty nice. Uh, there's a security guard over there, but you just walk in on the other side. No questions asked. It's pretty simple. And one big thing you'll notice about fall ball games, if you go to any, is that a lot of people in attendance are going to be scouts just because there's so much more time for them because there's only a few games happening at a time. I mean, if you think about it here, if there's a game at, or a series at Coastal, a series at UNCW, Campbell, all these different schools that are right near by each other, scouts can only go to one. They can only be at one place one time. But when it's the fall, they have these long days where it's like one school per day having these games. So it's really easy for a lot of scouts to make it to a lot of different places. And a lot of the time, scouts will be at inner squads too. Just any, any opportunity they can get to see these players and just know who to look out for come spring. But it's a really good time for the players too because you're so focused on your own personal development and getting better. And you want to test that out and see if the guys at the next level think you can do that. So... When you're in the springtime, you're just so focused on winning. So winning as a team, you don't really have the time to focus on those individual goals, but the fall is a really good time, especially as a college player, to refine those. So game number one has come and gone, and now we are two innings into game number two, making it 11 innings in on the day for these kids. The weather has cleared up significantly. We got 75 with a nice breeze. We've moved out to these Adirondack chairs in left field phenomenal place to take in a baseball game. Uh, I think this is either Kentucky Bluegrass or Bermuda. Either way, super comfortable. Might kick the shoes off, dip the toes in, let it just enjoy some. But I, I gotta say, this is like top five places like viewing experiences for a baseball game, just in terms of pleasantness. And the view is incredible. I mean, you really can't beat it. All in all, it was just a phenomenal day of college baseball, and UNCW just played so crisp for 16 innings straight, which is crazy. But if you're a UNCW fan, there's a lot to be excited about. They returned seven and nine starting players, and they had a lot of success last season, so they'll probably be building on that this year. In terms of stadiums, I really like this is one of my favorite places to watch college baseball just because. You know, it's a simple stadium. It pays homage to a lot of the guys who made a splash in the baseball world. It's got this sick little walkway that takes you up to the field, and you get a really nice view of all the action when you go up that little walkway. It's really cool. And then it has these palm trees to remind you, yeah, you're at a college baseball game, but you're also by the beach, so that's very cool. And then the concession stand, it's a perfect concession stand. It's got everything you want, and the food is phenomenal. Now, UNCW won both games of the doubleheader, scoring 13 runs in each game. In the second game, they had a fifth inning where they scored 10 runs, just an offensive explosion. And after the game, we were able to get onto the field and interview super senior Jack Kroom. I'm still not really sure what he and I talked about. And then I was able to interview head coach Randy Hood and talk to him about his recent contract extension. So here are those interviews now. Who are we joined by here? This is Jack Kroom, a fifth-year grandpa. Your fifth-year grandpa, have you spent all five here? I have, I have. All five. What's your favorite thing about this school specifically? Uh, I get to go boogie boarding when I'm not playing baseball. So you're boogie boarding. You do body boarding, or is it just just pure boogie? Uh, it's boogie boarding, and you got to get flippers because you realize you can only go so deep without flippers, but then you get flippers, and then you're out there, you know, overhead water then you're carving it up but 
<laughs> what's the, what's the biggest wave you've boogie boarded? A couple months ago, probably about a month ago, there's there's some like 10, 12 footers out there. I actually haven't been since because you know near death experience lost the lost the board. So I'm just out there with with flippers trying to make it back. But yes, yeah, so we've kind of cut that down a little bit. But there's some we get a hurricane swell coming in. It's baseball's at jeopardy for sure. You're you're like okay, it's boogie board or nothing. Like yeah. it, if you could be a college boogie boarder, would you switch baseball uh, for boogie boarder? Hundred percent. Because baseball is a game of failure. There's zero failing when you're out there boogieing. How far out into the water do you have to go then? Because, like, it sounds like you're pretty, like, far off from the shore. Yeah, so if there's not really good waves, it's you're 20 feet out there. But when, when those hurricanes come through, you're out sometimes a little past the pier, which is... That's, that's far. Yeah, it is. And I have, a, I have a fear of sharks, too. So it's like a love-hate relationship. As long as I got a buddy with me, I'm not that scared. But if it's just me out there, I'm staring in the water constantly with shadows, and it's it's tough. Now, buddy with you, are you making sure it's like a buddy who's a little bit worse at swimming than you? That way, like you know, yeah, you, you got the fan. You can, yeah, you, you got to look out for yourself in those situations. As as bad as it sounds, but you well, know, it's, it's a it's a sharky people world. Exactly, and I, I I don't like sharks. And if there's someone that's worse at swimming than me. It's not me. It's better for you. Exactly. Yeah. Last question on the topic. Um, so I saw recently in pop culture, there was a sea of sharks living under a volcano mm-hmm. in very hot acidic water. Yeah. And they adapted. Now they're just living wherever they want. How do you feel about that? See, that that's just another thing added to the list on why why sharks are so scary. They're just, they're going to adapt. You know, I think megadons are out there. Yeah. And they I, are. We don't you know. know there's out there. there's a lot of un, uncharted territory. So you know if they're if they've been hiding for you know probably about a thousand years now that we you know yeah um, that now that know they're of. they're under volcanoes now. What do you what are you studying here at school? Not much. Um, <laughs> what, uh, what subject do they say when you um, first walk into the class? So I I'm actually all online now because I'm a I'm a grad student. Oh, but I did even I did, better. Yeah, Congrats I, to you. Yeah, it's huge awesome. for boogie boarding. Yeah, exactly. Every morning, I'm business analytics masters, which is sounds hard, but it's you know two classes, two classes every seven weeks, all online. Is it open enrollment? Like, it's, can I sign up? I, I think just about anyone could do it. That sounds phenomenal. If yeah. you're going to UNCW, do that because you can boogie board a lot. Business analytics. Joined by UNCW's head coach Randy Hood. Coach Hood, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. A little long day, but I uh, got a chance to play. Uh, uh, some fall baseball innings, and um, it's good, good, good to be out here. For players, these fall scrimmages, it's all about going out, showing coach, hey, this is why you should put me in the lineup. As a coach, though, what are you looking for? What are you looking to see out of your team? I mean, I'm just looking for them to come out here and uh, continue to try to get better every day. Um, obviously, uh, you're you're playing a lot of inner squads, mm-hmm. uh, and when you get a chance to play uh, another team, it's always fun to compete against someone else. But uh, just you know, want them guys to play hard and, and to get after it, and uh, hopefully you know play well enough to where we can uh, you know winning is to me it's about winning and losing. So, mm-hmm. so when we're playing someone else, they're keeping score. I want to win the game. <laughs> yeah, if it's going to be public, we we want it to be our favor. Right? That's right. Now you spent a lot of time around North Carolina, specifically the college baseball around here. You had your introduction to it when you played at Campbell, yeah. coached at Campbell, and then you came here in 2002, I believe? Yeah, right? the, uh, the, the spring of 2002 was my first season. And I saw you just recently signed up to stay here through 2028. Yeah. What is it about Wilmington or the school that makes you that has made you so drawn to it? Well, I got this opportunity what, like 23 years ago to come <laughs> here, so it sounds like a long time. I'm kind of dating myself, but uh, just uh, the opportunity to uh, to come here and continue to build on what the coach staff and that our program was, and we've been able to have a lot of success over the last two decades, and uh, I still think there's another level we can get to, and I want to continue to be a part of it, and uh get the opportunity for another five years is because you got good baseball players and good coaches and good support staff. It's not just me. It's, it's about what those guys do. And um, I'm really grateful and thankful and I'm looking forward to, you know, continue to see where we can take this. Last season, you guys had a lot of success winning the regular season and the conference tournament. 
how are you looking to ride that momentum into this season? Because I feel like it's something where, you know, some of the guys who helped accomplish that are gone. They're replaced. How are we going to fill those roles? Well, we did. We did lose some some quality people, but we still got seven out of nine position guys back. Um, we got our whole starting staff back with the guy that was our number one two years ago, RJ Sales. So I think we have a lot of quality and, and solid players that can continue um, to build on what we had. Um, but it's it was you know our league was the seventh ranked uh, RPI league in the country. Yeah. And uh, we won the regular season. We won the conference tournament. Um, we got two teams in the tournament, us and Northeastern, and I think adding Campbell to our league now mm -hmm. just gives us another quality, quality um, top 25 program that I think our league can continue to do some really good things. You know, they're, they're a good club, so um, it doesn't excite me that we got to battle <laughs> three games on yeah. the weekend. But, uh, you know, but you know, they Justin's done a good job there. Um I'm excited for them to just continue to build and elevate what our uh, you know conference already is. But I'm I'm really excited for what we've got here and what we're trying to do, and, and hopefully we can continue to do some some things facility wise. And, and we got good players. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much for taking the time. I really right. appreciate. It.